Welcome to this week's End of Days Update, coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you're anywhere near West Branson, Missouri this weekend, we'll be at Living Word Church. Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, we'll have a great time. So we're coming to you every week to look at the different things that point to the coming of the Lord. The End of Days Update is about what's happened around Israel that literally connects with Scripture so that we can connect the dots to see how close we are. So we know the rapture of the church is signless, but the second coming has tons of signs. And the Lord wanted us to know, you know, he rebuked the Pharisees many times, but the only time he ever rebuked the crowd was he said, hey, you can tell what the weather's going to be, but you don't know your hour of visitation. So it bothered him. And it was kind of bizarre. He goes into town, demons start crying out to Jesus, hey, have you come to torment us before the time? So they, the demons knew Jesus was on a schedule, but he was just early because it wasn't time yet. So if demons could know, surely the church can know. And we come to a point at the end of the church age where we look at the, the Bible and the scriptures, there's verse after verse after verse showing us what it would look like. Why is that a big deal to the Lord? So that we'll, we'll react, we'll hustle. So it's not about an escape theology, it's about a hustle theology. And England's trying to show that exactly now by making noise. So there's something about end time teaching. It's not to go, oh gosh, I want to escape the tribulation. It's, it's look at how the finish line's right ahead of us and we've got to go for it. So wonderful, wild things are happening all around Israel that are, are literally, I saw things the last couple of days I thought I didn't know I'd be even seeing before the coming of the Lord. So let's pick up the, what's happened. Probably the most significant thing is this is really amazing. You have the, the, the son of the Shah of Iran shows up in Israel yesterday. This is Holocaust Remembrance Week. So what an amazing thing that, that Iran has a dignitary come to Israel to show its strength, even quotes verses from the Bible, talks about Cyrus, talks about uh, the, the history of Iran and Israel. Meanwhile, the actual president of Iran says, we're going to wipe out Tel Aviv, we're going to wipe out uh, Haifa. So in the midst of all that, you've got Iran sending missiles down into Syria, and Israel had to do a strike in the last couple of days. So into Syria, an airstrike. What, what, was, what were they doing? They were taking out convoys of missiles coming from Iran down into Syria. I do like that there's finally a little verbiage coming from the nation of Israel that Israel's under attack. They're completely surrounded on all sides with missiles and rockets firing at them. And 34 rockets the other day in one day. So uh, it's it's intriguing to see it build up like this in the midst of Israel looking like they're ready for civil war. Hamas looked like they were going to take advantage of that. But man, Israel's having to show some strength right now, which I finally like seeing a little bit more of a verbiage to it doesn't matter what we're going through ju judicially. We still got to protect our country. I mean, just the, with, with that happening, you had Turkey uh, launch that new drone boat last week and Turkey fired uh, uh, shots into in, uh, Turkey fired shots into Iraq today and into Syria, northern Syria. So you got Turkey doing bizarre stuff. You've got Iran continually doing all the bizarre stuff. Then you have weirder things happening uh, in, in the states. Even you had the state of Washington pass a bill that they could hide a child from their parents if they wanted to go transgender. I mean, how insane is that? So in the midst of all the war things happening, you've got uh, bizarre things. Ha I don't even get into all that stuff every week because there's so much of it that it's just bizarro. And you've got an eclipse happening today on the 20th of April. It's it's called a hybrid eclipse. Uh, part of it, the the whole, there'll be a total eclipse. And the other part will be a ring of fire. I think that <coughs> ring of fire is significant about the earth getting ready to go through a, a time of fire called the tribulation. So you have that. You've got earthquakes happening right now. And then you had China come out. This is another one of those things that you just kind of shake your head and go, is this really happening? China comes out after them making connections with Saudi Arabia and Iran, which that's just bizarre on its own, because Saudi Arabia was making connections with Israel because they were concerned about how crazy Iran is. But China steps in this last week. After doing that and bringing that together, I know England is bizarre that they did. China steps in, and now they offered to help bring peace to the Palestinians in Israel because you've got terrorist attack after terrorist attack happening right now in Israel. Uh, bizarre things happening about the West Bank. Bizarre stuff happening over the Temple Mount. Uh, so literally what the Bible said, you'd see that, that Jerusalem would be a cup of trembling for all nations. But when you see China doing stuff like this and you seeing them reaching out like that, it's just absolutely wild. You had South Korea fire some warning shots over some North Korean boats that were getting close to their area. North Korea keeps doing things that are completely provocative. And then you had uh, uh, China's prime minister uh, meet with Russia, meet with Putin. He talked, <laughs> he talked about uh, things coming. I laugh because what's coming 
coming out is all this Chinese equipment coming into Russia that's ending up in the Ukraine. Whereas China says, no, we're not supporting Russia. And it's just interesting seeing different generals say we are already in World War III. When you go to behind the scenes and talk to the ones, they talk about we are already there. So the world's getting set up for World War III. And what happens there is the Ezekiel 38 war happens. I believe the church will depart. Uh, and, and, and Russia brings Turkey and Iran against Israel, and God intervenes. That's why I think that it happens just after the rapture of the church. Because in this dispensation, God doesn't really intervene. He gave all authority to the church. So you have all of this uh, playing out right in front of our eyes. So what, what do we do? We help our local church, help our local pastor. Uh, you, you see all this stuff coming to us because the Lord loves us. He wants us to have a heads up. I had a guy say one time, Joe, you preach on the coming of the Lord, just get everybody's hopes up. That's exactly right. Uh, the coming of the Lord is the hope that purifies us even as we are pure. So how exciting to see the playbook show us what's coming. I know it is amazing, England. England's wanting to be vocal. Uh, It's fun that everybody wants to see him. So, okay, we always go back to the scriptures. What's the scripture say? Number one, Israel made a nation, Jerusalem went back. The Bible says the generation, Jesus said the generation sees those two events will not pass away till all is fulfilled. Then you've got the Hebrew language restored. You've got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You've got the fertility of the land of Israel. You've got the revival of the Roman Empire. You have 170 different species of predatory birds start showing up. You had the fish showing up in the Dead Sea. You had the Dead Sea turn blood red last fall where Sodom and Gomorrah was. Uh, on the Day of Atonement, you have foxes on the Temple Mount. You have the ritual baths around the Temple Mount filled up with water. You have Russia going to Crimea, Russia going into the Ukraine. All of these things point to the coming of the Lord. I mean, these are things the Bible said you'd see. I think in our book it said there's 79 some odd signs. I didn't bring a book with me this time, but man, you need to get uh, End Times Made Easy. There's, it's laid out so that we can grasp it. And I do like the charts at the end from Clarence Larkin so you can v- visualize literally where we are in the plan of God. And he gives you scripture and verse for each one of them. So uh, right now we're living in this. So we have sign after sign after sign. Men will be lovers themselves. We have selfie sticks. You've got uh, b- b- Rabbi Ixach Kaduri, Jesus appears to him. He said, I've come to see Jesus as the Messiah, prophesied that Israel would be ruled by two Benjamins just for the coming of the Lord. That happened uh, a couple years ago. Amazing. You have the archway for Baal worship uh, built by Russia last year in Palmyra. That's where the Tower of Babel was. I mean, why is that a big deal? Because the Talmud says that's the last thing you'll see before the coming of the Messiah. So many, many things happening with asteroids. You had a meteorite explode over Israel yesterday. So uh, there's no talk of that in the news whatsoever. So forgot to get into that even when we're talking about the things that are happening right now. But a meteorite explodes over the land of Israel yesterday. Crazy. So you have all of that. Then you've got signals. You had blood red moons on Passover and Tabernacles, four in a row. A few years ago, amazing. NASA calls that a tetrad. When's the last time you saw four in a row uh, on Passover and Tabernacles? 1967 when Jerusalem was won back. 1948 when Israel's made a nation. And 1492 at the Edict of Expulsion when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. So remarkable seeing uh, signs in the heavens in conjunction with Israel having amazing things happening with their land. So you have that. Then you have the Bethlehem Star. I really like that because you have Jupiter, Regulus, Venus come together at the birth of Jesus. Constellation was Virgo. And then why? You have Regulus, a king planet, Jupiter, a king planet. You had Regulus do retrograde motion. It looks like it's going backwards, but it was crowning Jupiter. I mean, amazing. So that happened at the birth of Jesus. And this last year, we had it again. Uh, one of the nightly news channels said, we have a celestial event, Jupiter, Regulus, Venus, first time in 2,000 years. What was the constellation? Leo, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. So this is it. Uh, this is about hustling. This is about helping your local church, helping your local pastor. And, and why? Because as we see the finish line, we accelerate. There's so many things for us to do right now. There's such a, a lot of work that has to be pushed into a short period of time to get the message out. We are very, very close to the coming of the Lord. Almost every single day something happens that I go, you know, I didn't really think it'd be that blatant, but but it's getting more and more blatant every day. And I rejoice because uh, for the world, there's such bad news, but for the church, there is no bad news. We'll be caught up. And I hear people go, well, that's just an escape theology. That's exactly right. I'm not supposed to be here during that seven years. That's seven years promised. uh, That's old covenant time. So we're privileged to watch it play out right in front of our eyes because the king's getting ready to come back. What do we do about that? Uh, we, We rejoice that we're getting to see these things. We lift up our heads. We don't have a downtrodden mentality. We have a go for it mentality. Wow. We're about to see the author of life.
King of kings and Lord of lords. And have a blessed week. We'll see you the next Wednesday. We'll get back into what's all happened, and we'll see how close we are to the coming of the Lord. Thanks for joining us today at the End of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.